Uh, so that's that and uh, that's the statistical reversion strategy that we are going to be creating right now so i will show you or walk you through the code then yeah you can determine if it is uh, worth it or not but i can tell you this because uh, um what we have here really is the is the we used four steps four or five we use the mean we use the skewness we use the variance we use the the jacobera strategy both are either moments or distributions in that uh, case so we use actually four four five we also have the cartoys for measuring the relevances and all that kind of stuff and then you use confidence level of a uh, 90 to 95 90 to 99 percent in that uh, case a uh, stuff of a uh, default of a uh, 95 percent level of confidence or confidence level so this is the expert advisor i'm going to walk you through super quick then we can share the code for you to you know learn from it or maybe modify it later on so the first thing is uh, we usually do what you do we include the trade class of a year for you know trading operations we include the math class as well to help us in do the statistical work the mathematical statistical work like calculating the moments in that case this is the easiest way to do the mathematical computations and then finally we add the chart objects over here to enable us to draw the dashboard that you did see on the chart really then eh, we have some several inputs over here that we do have grouped into groups so the first group is the statistical parameters and uh, input of a period for 50 bars for doing the calculations then the confidence level as i did say again between 90 to 99 percent a default of 95 percent 0.95 really then the jb threshold jb in this case stands for jacubera this is not an english wording it is some other yeah river threshold that we use the cutwise threshold that we use default of a five and then the higher time frame zero disables the stuff higher time frame confirmation so you have zero by default else you could have either whichever you want to have over there really then uh, we have the trading parameters over here we have the risk parameter i mean most of these stuffs now are self-explanatory we actually have added these uh, comments for you to you know get to know what to what to do really or what they are typically so explanatory so never mind about that then we have the c trade the global variables over here we start with the c trade class which we instantiate this trading object trade then we have this the last bar to keep track of the previous bar so that you can trade on each and every bar you can do the checks on each and every bar if you want want to do the multiplier over here for broker units then we'll change this one from five you know some brokers have uh, four digits over here like you can see the, the, this mine is having five and three some other brokers have four and two so that's why we need that global variable over there and then we instantiate the chart objects over here for the rectangle label as well as the actual label so which will enable us to do the naming of the dashboard that you did see we have the an array over here that whereby we store what we want to add on the dashboard you can get rid of some things that you don't want to have for others in our case we display all the indicator stuffs then we have the static count over here for the number of the static labels because some things are won't need to be updated and others not be updated so that's why we need that count for the names that need to be updated then 
we have the function over here first of all to create the dashboard i think this is self-explanatory all the way to the downside in that uh, case we did some configurations here and there to make sure everything is fitting in well into its place or that kind of uh, instance i'm not going to take a lot of time on this really let's just go super quick and then i will share the code on our telegram channel and group as well so that's the code the function responsible for creating the initial dashboard then this is the function responsible for updating that particular dashboard after we have created it really then from there we have the function not to delete the dashboard on deinitialization this is why we will call this particular function to delete the dashboard using the g then dot delete at the end if it is not uh, the pointer is not null then we free the array of the static and value labels they redraw the chart and say um oh, chart board is clear that's all on the on initialization we set the expert magic number division of 10 points and filling to be f okay then the digits over here is where we do that magic to change the broadcast of point multiplier in over there then uh, we take we calculate now the values in this uh, case we check if the user has the responsive or the correct values in our case we restrict or constrain that we need to have at least a confidence level of 90 to 90 nine percent in that case if else we reset to 95 percent in that instance so this is just to like have a uh, more better signals you could really go ahead and say you want to have from 60 to 90 or 100 percent doesn't really matter whatever you have that's your choice then again you do the same same thing for the risk percentage over yeah we don't want the user to have more than 10 percent risking more than more than 10 percent per trade in that uh, instance so the user can say 100 percent yeah it is your choice to you know go ahead and you can modify that then we have the this one now we draw the dashboard if showing the dashboard is uh, allowed then we print a message to say initialization is successful or deinitialization we delete the dashboard we call that function that i did say earlier on 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 tick this is what you do we have these functions over here for managing the already opened trades these functions they are defined over here below we have defined those functions over here just for you to for me to tell you what we have we have for managing the trailing stop or applying the trailing stop this is not really the first time you're seeing this function on our channel so partial close not the, really the first time and also for closing these uh, stuffs whenever we have some you know exited some duration we want to close some stuffs to you can't have a trade like it is open you want to close a trade within a day and then it, it it stays open for like two three days if the market is not really responding then you want to close it if you allow it to close if you want to it it to close uh -huh. so in the on tick this is what we do we have this function over here the if statement at first over there and then to just like do the checks on each and every new bar and, and not on each and every new tick so if enable use trailing stop is enabled we call the function if use partial closes is enabled then we manage the partial closes we close the positions partially then we manage the tab based exit over here you could also go ahead and have a if statement to in this case if you don't want to force time based exit then we update the dashboard using these values as 000 and getting the position status the profit duration and the signal status all that kind of instance these are helper functions again that we have defined them here below just a minute we have the normal inverse to inverse the stuff that we have because the graph that we draw is a inverse 
then we have the position to get the the function to get the position status easy peasy just like that the function to get the current lot size this is just pretty straightforward the current profit and also the position duration and the position status signal status that is also the function to check if it has the position which is an overloading function over here for just is for any type and then the other function is for any position in that uh, instance then the function to close all the positions we want to close all the positions before opening new positions once we do have a ticket uh, from there we have um, we pretty much call the functions we check if the market is available by checking if the bid and the ask prices are available if not available we print the error we print the dashboard is zero values and they return in that case it is a vote function so we don't need to return anything so we just return then we copy the closing prices to these prices array that we have over here which is a dynamic array in that case is it easy we then calculate the statistical moments using these math moments that is over here specifically the mean variance skewness and cutways which are actually just like over over eight then go to definition and then this is why it is defined based on that uh, math class that we did include in that case this is how we calculate the mean variance skewness and cutwise that is over there easy peasy that's done then we get the jq test jq bearer test which is now dependent on the cutwise and the skewness based on whatever just came from over yeah you can go ahead and google the the um, equation that we used i'm not going to explain that really then we uh, this is how now we go ahead and print the skewness and the all those mathematical stuffs that we have that take is basically the three of them the skewness the jb and the cutways that we do have and log them just for you to know what is really happening then we calculate the adaptive skewness thresholds the skewness cutways filter over here so explanatory then we go ahead and calculate the standard deviation and now we calculate the we get set to calculate the confidence level so this is how we calculate the confidence level based on the value that we have over here for the user input or the selected one we calculate the z score now using the normal inverse and now we go ahead and calculate the upper ci and the lower ci using the standard deviation just like we usually have we need three stuffs to to actually have those confidence uh, uh, stuffs we need the i mean we need the upper confidence level the normal or middle confidence level and then the lower confidence level then we proceed to get the higher price and then after getting the price over there we have the higher time frame value to append those values to that time frame and then get the whatever then we have the functional to check for buy valid buy and sell signals based on whatever we add and then we have the fallback signal if it is the first time the expert advice is running in that uh, instance or we don't have any enough data yet then we go ahead and print the stuff that we have in that uh, case then we get ready to open positions based on the signal status that we have over here now um we have we first of all want to close all the positions in that case if we have a sell signal we close all the buy positions if we have a buy signal we close all the sell positions that's why the position was really necessary over there but it is not a must for you to have that position then we calculate the lot size based on the fixed lots of the the calculated ones based on the account equity you could use either the account equity or the account balance doesn't really matter over there uh, this was just our arbitrary uh, 
decision to make then you get the lot size and then normalize the lot size in that case then make sure that the lot size is within the allowed maximum to avoid that invalid lot size or trading volume error then this is how we open the new positions if you don't have any position and we have a buy signal we go ahead and use the trade dot buy to open the buy position yes if we don't have a position and we have a sell signal we go ahead and open a sell position in that instance easy peasy then we just update the dashboard extra easy again over here now when updating the dashboard we have those values after doing the calculation so we input now the main the lower ci the upper ci the skewness all that kind of data but before that earlier on we were just having those as zero because we did not have that information ready over here you did not have all the information already so you can make you maybe get rid of these but yeah it is all of the information over here is necessary for you to update the it is for you to decide how to update the the dashboard really then from there we have um, we just redo the trailing stuff over here the position management trail the positions that are viable trail the i mean man, uh, partially close the positions and then exit the positions that are expired and that's all nothing else really and um yeah so we are going to be updating this code on our uh, telegram channel link is always in the description that's all uh, thank you and bye bye but if you don't want to be there then this is what what we usually do usually go ahead and uh, you know scroll this up a little bit just slowly for you to copy the code and um, yeah you can do some other cool stuff with that like modifying it like uh, advancing it like uh, optimizing it and there are many other things that you could really do like adding or subtracting or, or maybe using the same exact code uh, never mind. Yeah, that's 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 all that's that so bye bye and see you later later happy trading happy algorithmic trading <laughs>